didn't she also call it her inner goddess or was that something else she called her inner goddess? I can't remember. I don't think I want to remember. Hi all, and welcome to another episode of the Such a Fun Read podcast. I'm your host and resident reader, Cherie Lampley. And here we'll be diving in each week to chat about the books we love, the books people just can't stop talking about, and how we deal with being book obsessed. And in today's episode, you know what book we're going to be talking about. You read the title of the episode, you saw the thumbnail if you're watching on YouTube. And what other book would be perfect to talk about during Valentine's week? I'm sure you might be naming a few. I'm sure others have crossed your mind, but those books will not be talked about today. For this episode, we are going to be talking about Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. I was going to go to the store and get some Valentine's Day decorations, get some box chocolate, but I didn't end up having a chance to do that, at least to decorate for the video and all, make it more festive if you're watching on YouTube, but I didn't get a chance to do that. I don't normally buy the heart-shaped box of chocolate anyway because I don't end up eating them all. I'm not a big fan of nuts. I think Snickers bars are the only candy bar with nuts in them that I'll actually eat. And I actually haven't had a Snickers bar in a while. Maybe I'll end up going to get some candy after they go on sale and try them. Maybe my tastes have changed. Sometimes that happens. I'll report back if that's the case. Speaking of candy... With Valentine's Day coming and going, we are just so much closer to the release of the best candy, the Reese eggs. I love that candy. Just put them in the freezer and they are just, they are just so good. I will say they have gotten a lot more expensive than they used to be, but I'm definitely going to end up getting some this year. Now back to Fifty Shades. We're just going to be talking about the first book today. I am thinking of doing more episodes of the other books in the series. Definitely let me know if that is something you'd be interested in. Maybe I'll end up reading the second book and do that one in March. And then maybe the third one can be done in April. For the books that are from Christian's perspective, I'm thinking I can just put them all in one video. I'll have to read them, of course. I'm not sure if those will need more than one episode. I will, of course, have to read them to see, though. Now, this is not the typical genre that I read, but I figured for this occasion, it being the week of Valentine's Day, I'd make an exception. But come to think of it, I haven't really read my favorite genre this year yet. I just haven't been in the mood to read fantasy yet. So hopefully that changes. Hopefully that does. But in the meantime, I'm just going to be reading whatever my mood wants me to read. Now, if by chance you do not know what Fifty Shades of Grey is about, I will give you a quick overview. So the book follows our girl, Anastasia Steele, who is a soon-to-be college graduate. And she's trying to figure out what she's going to be doing with her future. She ends up being a stand-in to interview billionaire businessman Christian Grey for her roommate since her roommate was was sick. They meet, they become fixated with each other. She learns about his take on relationships. It was birthed from Twilight fan fiction and it became its very own phenomenon. It involved a version of Edward and Bella, a universe master. Well, the fanfic was called Masters of the Universe and a Snow Queen Ice Dragon. It was huge. It was a blockbuster. It really seemed to be everywhere. It was one of those books that even if you didn't read it, If someone tells you the character's name, you would definitely know who they were talking about. I actually ended up buying the box set of this book series during the pandemic, thinking that I was going to end up reading them, but I didn't get a chance to do that. Actually, no, I did start it in 2020. I got about 150 pages into it before I decided that I just needed to read something else. And I also tried to read it back in like 2015, 2016, I think. I had it on my Kindle and I just never completed it. But now that I've actually read it, I do think it's time that I actually talk about it. So I guess this episode is going to be long overdue. Oh, and there will be slight spoilers, just FYI. So Fifty Shades of Grey, this book, Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm trying to figure out how to even start this. There has already been so much discussion about this book in the series over the years. And this book came out over a decade ago. The movie came out nine years ago. 
I think my biggest curiosity about this book doesn't even involve the book. It is more me wondering if we'll ever see anything like it again, but we'll get to that later. I think we can start with how we got this book in the first place. How we even ended up in a world with Fifty Shades of Grey. So Erica Mitchell, or E.L. James as we know her, she was a fan of Twilight and also a fan of writing fan fiction. She has said that she was just inspired by Stephanie Meyer, the author of Twilight, and she just started writing. The characters in her story were Edward and Bella and not yet Christian and Anna. She ended up removing the vampires and made Edward a billionaire. Also, she ended up making it erotica and it was named Masters of the Universe or Master of the Universe. Is it Masters of the Universe He-Man? That's, I should not get that mixed up. If that's the case, let me, let me not mix those up. Oh, and her pen name was Snow Queen Ice Dragon, which now makes me curious on why she chose that for a pen name. This was back in 2009, by the way, and it ended up gaining a huge following. And then she decided to make the story more of her own. She changed the characters' names. She possibly updated the plots. I say possibly because I never actually read the fan fiction of these books. So I don't really know how much of the plot has changed. There is mention online of her making some changes, but I'm not really sure how much. Then the books were released on ebook and print on demand. They were self-published until Vintage Books came calling and they acquired them in March of 2012. And like I said earlier, it became a phenomenon. It topped the bestseller list. Movie studios came calling as well for an adaptation. There is also merchandise and yes, it is that kind of merchandise. It ended up becoming the fastest selling paperback. The book series has sold over 150 million copies. The movie series crossed a billion dollars at the box office. And we can thank Stephanie Meyer and Twilight for all of it. And what I mean by that is there was a large group of women that read Twilight and or went to go see the Twilight movies. It was not just teenage girls that enjoyed the series. I had a box set of the Twilight DVDs and I may still have it. I may have it around my apartment somewhere. I know I gave it to a friend to try to force her to watch the movies and she still has yet to do that, but that is besides the point. But anyway, the reason why I brought that box set up is because there was a bonus feature on it where there was like a documentary about the fans. And I guess there was like a Twilight Moms Facebook group or maybe it was a website, but women would come together to talk about this series. Also the fan fiction aspect of it. I just checked and there are over 220,000 stories on fanfiction.net about Twilight. It's only second to Harry Potter. I also did a check and only saw around 4,000 stories about Fifty Shades. We can talk about that later though. Now, I can't speak for people that read fan fiction. I don't typically read it myself. I have nothing against it. I just don't go looking for it. A few other things I could say that help make this book popular, and that is the book cover as well as the Kendall. This cover just shows the title of the book, the author's name, and it has a tie. That's it. And when the book came out and you would go to the bookstore to purchase it, there was discretion there. It is an erotic romance, but can you really tell with the book cover? Also with the Kendall, I believe that was around the height of the Kendall's popularity. And reading the book on the Kindle made it even more discreet, especially after the book got more popular and people started to bash it. If you're reading on your Kindle, does anyone really know? And of course, there are some people who don't really care what others think about what they read and they will read anything out in front of people. But everyone isn't like that. There are people who want to read in peace. They don't want people to look at them like, or at least they think they want to read in peace because are people actually going to be judgy for what you're reading? Maybe they are. I don't know. Like today, if you saw someone with a paperback of Fifty Shades of Grey and they were sitting outside in public or at a cafe or somewhere and they were reading it, would you, first of all, would you judge them for reading it? 
as well as would you even remember that you saw someone read it? Now back to the popularity of this book. There were also some people who just wanted to read it for the sex scenes. Let's be real here. That was a thing. Twilight was young adult, so it wasn't giving Edward and Bella having sexy times. At least not all throughout the series. And also not having very descriptive sexy times. And with Fifty Shades, there are a number of sex scenes in this book and possibly more than there would normally be in a romance novel. Now, I didn't count them as I was reading, but I did find an article on Bustle that listed 14 sex scenes. And when the book has that much sex, it intrigues some people. I also remember at some point there were celebrities reading excerpts of the book, and there were videos of those celebrities reading them, especially the sex scenes, and that would definitely increase awareness and popularity of it. So Twilight was huge. There was a lot of fan fiction for Twilight. Fifty Shades came out of one of those fan fictions. The intriguing nature of the amount of the sex scenes in the book and the way you could read the book was for your eyes only. Definitely ingredients for a blockbuster. So what were my thoughts on the book? I didn't love it. I definitely didn't love it. But I also didn't hate it. It is too long, though. It is definitely way too long for a romance. It's like over 500 pages. Here's my copy. It's over 500 pages. That is way too long for a romance. You can cut that book down and have it be 300 pages. 350 max. I mean, there is no... Well, I was... I was going to say there's no magic system, which there isn't, but there is a contract in that book that is 11 pages, 11 pages for a contract. Now, as I said, it is not a fantasy per se, but it does involve our main character experiencing a new world. And then we get to experience that new world with her. Some of the things we experience with her in this new world, we may not have wanted to experience, but I guess there's nothing really you can do about it. Because if you are determined to finish this book, you're going to experience, you're going to experience some things. Now, since I mentioned her, let's talk about the main character first. Let's talk about Anastasia Steele or just Anna. I'm just going to call her Anna. Anna is a shy, reserved college student. She has a part-time job at a hardware store, and she is very close to her stepfather, the one who raised her. And her mother lives in Florida with her newer stepfather. She's a reader. She loves reading classic British literature, like Thomas Hardy and Emily Bronte. She's very smart. She has a 4.0 GPA. Thank you very much. And she has this ridiculous subconscious that we all have to suffer hearing from. Speaking of, I'm curious about something. Whenever the subconscious was brought up, did you ever think about Lizzie McGuire? And what I mean by that is in the Lizzie McGuire show, there was this animated version of Lizzie McGuire. And for some reason, whenever I read whatever the subconscious was saying, I would think about that animated version and I would picture an animated version of Anna because Anna would always mention how her subconscious would talk to her and look at her in certain ways. So I kind of needed to put a face to that subconscious and for some reason I went to an animated version of Anastasia Steele that looks like or is similar to the animated version of Lizzie McGuire. I don't know. The subconscious is annoying and is not needed at all. And I'm hoping that it shows up less and less in the sequels. Didn't she also call it her inner goddess? Or was that something else she called her inner goddess? I can't remember. I don't think I want to remember. But let's get, let's get back on track. Another thing about Anna, she knows what she wants. And... She wants Christian, which seemed to kind of surprise her because the men around her were pretty much obsessed with her and she wanted nothing to do with them. You had Jose, which was the fill-in for Jacob from Twilight. 
as well as Paul, who works at the hardware store, who was the fill-in for Mike. Both of them in Twilight were pretty much obsessed with Bella, so I guess it makes sense that both of these guys were obsessed with Anna, whether I enjoyed that part or not. But she wants nothing to do with them. Paul is cute in a wholesome, all-American, boy-next-door kind of way, but he's no literary hero. Not by any stretch of the imagination. And of course, she ends up wondering if Christian is. If Christian is that literary hero that she has just been waiting for. She seems to have a type. And that type resembles the men in the books that she reads. And Christian being a billionaire and being as gorgeous as the men in the books that she reads about. Being that he seems to not be like any other guy that she's ever met she begins to fixate on him. And then he takes her out for coffee and buys her gifts, and it's a wrap. It's a wrap. No one else will ever compare. He is who she wants, whether he is good for her or he is not. She just does not care. She'll just have to figure that out later. Let's now talk about Christian real quick. He's a billionaire, as I mentioned before, owns great enterprises. I believe that's the name. He is apparently gorgeous, And he is broody. He has a complicated past. And this man is a mess who has no idea what he wants. I made a note in my book on page 72 when he says, I don't do romance. And I I was like, but he sent the books. He sent her first editions of her favorite books. He also took her on that helicopter ride. And that was on their second date. I believe it was their second date because the coffee date was their first date, right? He started saying later's baby to her. He started trying to be cute with her. Also, at one point, I feel like he seems proud that her stepfather thinks of him as her boyfriend. But back to later's baby for a moment. Why was that the choice? I know that phrase is different and that's something that we will all remember but I don't know if that is a phrase that will be remembered in a good way and I'm usually okay with cringe but that might be a little bit too cringy let me take a little bit out that is cringe that is very cringy I would never want to say that to someone and I would never want them to say it to me that is cringe couldn't she have come up with something else But I digress. Christian is all over the place and I'm going to need him to make up his mind. But maybe that's the point. He's used to doing one thing, but this woman has come into his life and things seem to be changing for him. He's starting to feel things and he doesn't know how to deal with that. He's also very controlling, which yeah, that's not fun. But she doesn't follow along. She doesn't do what he always wants her to do. And maybe that makes him even more curious about her. I mean, because in Twilight, you had where Edward couldn't read Bella's thoughts. And you can't really have that in Fifty Shades because there's nothing supernatural about this story. So I guess her defying him makes him more curious, which also makes them more toxic. Let's move on. I do remember texting one of my friends at one point and telling them that Christian is worse but also better in the book. And I don't even know what that meant. (laughs) I don't know what I meant by that. I probably should have wrote something down. But like, I remember saying that, but I don't remember why I said that. So let's talk about some of the things that I actually liked about this book. We'll start there first. I like that I was able to finish the book this time. I mean, third time's a charm. It helps when you get the audiobook from the library. That does help. So you can listen to it while you read. That definitely helped. Oh, there is a moment in the book that did seem a bit less controlling than in the movie. When Anna goes to visit her mother, we get to see her spend more time with her mother and we get to know her mother better. That's good. Also, during this time, we see more of the conversations that were had between Anna and Christian. And in that conversation, she wishes that he was there with her. So when he ends up showing up, I guess it kind of felt more inviting. Because in the movie, it doesn't feel inviting at all. It feels like intrusion. It's not great. And it's not great here either, but it's less not 
great. He also doesn't steal her away from her mother right away. He leaves them to continue their time together, but her mother does push Anna towards him, tells Anna to go after him. It seemed to be something that Anna wanted to do anyway. So I guess we get more agency from Anna in the book at some points. I probably should have read the book before I rewatched the movie instead of rewatching the movie and then reading the book. That might have been a weird choice. Another thing I think I can say that I liked was getting to see more of their relationship and maybe why they actually liked each other. Like I mentioned earlier, how Anna turned guys away and she became fixated on this guy who was like the men that she read about. And for Christian, he liked a challenge? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out Christian and why he likes Anna. I also didn't mind the emails back and forth he ends up giving her a blackberry and that made me miss having my blackberry i say i miss having a blackberry but i really don't know if i could ever go back to just having a blackberry so those were a few things that i did like what about the things i didn't i'm not going to go on and on about every single detail that might take a bit i'm just going to name a few here first of all i wanted to mention that ihop is overrated they went to IHOP when they were in Georgia. When Christian went to Georgia to surprise Anna, while Anna was visiting her mom, at some point they ended up going to IHOP. I saw that. I was like, ew. I'm not a big fan of IHOP. I'm just not. I know that has nothing to do with the plot, but I just figured I'd mention it because I saw it. I didn't like it. There is also a moment where Anna tells Christian she doesn't like that he spends money on her. And it makes her feel like he's paying for sex. And this is in one of their email conversations. And he pretty much dismisses her. Yes, I'm rich. Get used to it. Why shouldn't I spend money on you? We told your father I'm your boyfriend for heaven's sake. Isn't that what boyfriends do? But Christian, I thought you weren't her boyfriend. I thought you didn't do relationships. Another thing I didn't like, the other men outside of Christian, Jose and Paul... I almost called him Mike. I almost called him Mike. But I didn't like that they were so obsessed with her. I didn't like that they were obsessed with Anna. With Jose trying to kiss her while they're out drunk partying with their friends. And she's telling him she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to do it. But he's not accepting no. Didn't like that. And then also with Paul, he was pretty pushy with her. Kept asking her why she won't go on a date with him. And then he doesn't stop until she mentions Christian. It just seemed like a way to make Christian look a lot better in people's eyes. And I didn't like that. Also, the secondary characters, they didn't really feel real. They felt more like caricatures. Oh, and I'm going to bring that contract back up. That contract was way too long. It was 11 pages. 11 pages of a contract. Why? I don't even remember half the stuff that was in it. Actually, I'm not going to say half. I don't really remember what was in it. I remember the food thing because that's something memorable. The contract was too long. It was just too long. <laughs> or at least dispersed the contract throughout the book. I don't know. It was it was long. Also, there were some moments that kind of grossed me out. Yeah, there was a moment when she is on her period. And it's just a scene I didn't need. Didn't need that scene. No. And I'm not going to complain about all the sex scenes. I know what I signed up for by reading Fifty Shades. I know it involves a lot of sex scenes. But that scene with her period, it wasn't necessary. No, we don't. We didn't need that. Mm -mm. I'd say overall, I think this book could have been a cautionary tale on what it is like to fall for the wrong person. In the story there don't have any sequels just a cautionary tale but that is not what the story is and I'm really curious about how I'll feel once I read the next one and please tell me there is less of her subconscious oh another thing I didn't like I forgot to mention this but there were so many terms for Christian I'm trying to keep this PG. There were so many terms for Christian's member. It felt like she was trying to keep it PG. There were just so many different terms for Christian's manhood, I'll call it. 
just it felt like every <laughs> sex scene she called it something different never by what it actually is at least i don't think it was she called it different things she really did i didn't like that i did not like that now would i recommend this book for others to read no no i would not i think though if you're curious about it go ahead give it a try again the audiobook is not bad the audiobook is not bad see if it's available at your local library there you go. It most likely is. I think, at least with my library, the Fifty Shades books seem to be available a lot. So there you go. Also, if you've seen the movies and you just want to know more, I guess then yeah, go ahead. And if you've seen the movies and just want more sex scenes, they're in the book. I want to now talk about something that I mentioned earlier. Like how there were only around 4,000 fan fiction stories on fanfiction.net about Fifty Shades of Grey. Maybe there are more on other fan fiction sites. I'm not sure. If there are, let me know. But curiosity is getting the better of me here. The books in the trilogy came out. The movies came out. The books from Christian's perspective came out. And now I feel like there's nothing this series was a huge blockbuster. It was a phenomenon. And now I don't really see people talking about it. Well, I, I guess I'm talking about it. And I guess I've seen some people react to the movies on their YouTube channels, but that's about it. Maybe I'm just not looking in the right place. I'm not sure, but it just doesn't feel like Fifty Shades is a part of the pop culture. But maybe I'm just not looking in the right place. Are people still talking about these books? Are people still talking about the movies? Are there any new fans that weren't fans before? But here is my biggest curiosity. If E.L. James were to announce another book in this series, if she were to say that a new Fifty Shades book was coming out, would people be excited for it? I know she came out with another series the Mister, I believe it's called. I have it somewhere on one of my bookshelves. <laughs> have not read that though. But that series doesn't have the same popularity as Fifty Shades did. I'm just really curious about what would happen if she were to announce another Fifty Shades book. Speaking of the popularity of books, one of the things I love is when book publishing meets pop culture when everyone comes together to read a book, when the people that don't normally read make their way to the bookstore or the library to see what all the fuss is about. And I would love for that to happen again. I'm just not really sure if it will. We had Harry Potter, we had Twilight, we had The Hunger Games, we had Fifty Shades. Even before those movies all those books were adapted into movies. And even before those movies came out, if the characters were mentioned, I feel like people would know who you were talking about. The books were part of the pop culture zeitgeist. And I really would love for this to happen again. I know that there are popular authors out there. I know that Colleen Hoover is popular. I know that Sarah J. Mass is popular. I've only read one Colleen Hoover book, and that was Ugly Love. And I really don't want to talk about that. That was a while ago and I didn't like it. I think I remember somewhat of what happened in the book, but I couldn't give you the name of the characters. And I couldn't tell you any name of the characters of any of her other books. I've also read books in each of Sarah J. Mass's series. I haven't finished them though. I'm working on it. I'll get to them, but I do remember the names of the characters. I just don't know if Feyre is a name that non-readers would recognize. I feel like we could do predictions on what type of book will be the next big thing, the next book that everyone reads, but I feel like we can do that in an episode all on its own. So that will be coming soon. Okay, enough Fifty Shades, enough talking about Anna and Christian. We'll get back to the series at some point. Definitely let me know if you're interested in me continuing to read the series and making episodes on them. I'll probably go more in depth about the books in the other episodes. I just really got curious about the popularity of Fifty Shades here. So, but that is all for today. And thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Such a Fun Read. I really hope you enjoyed this discussion and I am definitely interested in your thoughts. Also, to really help the podcast out, don't forget to rate us five stars and show us some love on your favorite podcast app. 
If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss another episode. And I will talk to you guys again next week. Happy reading.